Welcome back, everybody. Stu, AG6AG here. I wanted to put a video together that gave some ideas on how to share a single antenna between an SDR and an HF rig. Um, certainly makes it easier for you to use that SDR as a pan adapter when you do that. If you have uh, RF out or IF out at the back of the radio, I do touch on that and how to get that configured on HDSDR. But I also show some solutions that utilize antenna switches, some specially designed just for this purpose. Now, this is rather complicated configuration when you start talking about adding and taking away antennas from systems that are on and operating live. Um, your mileage may vary. Make sure that you know what you're doing and you understand what you're doing before you hook this stuff up. If you hook it up wrong or if something goes wrong with the switch, you could damage equipment. So just be careful and enjoy the video. Hi everybody. If you have not watched my video on how to set up HDSDR with a RTL SDR dongle, I strongly recommend you watch that one before you watch this one. Um, when we finished with doing that, we basically were at the point where we could just go ahead and launch HDSDR on an antenna and it would go ahead and work. We got all our configuration done and we got it talking to the dongle. So let's, uh, let's make sure that we're both starting at the same place, okay? Anyway, once you have it to the point where it's on an antenna and it's talking to uh, uh, the computer and everything else, then... Uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get OmniRig downloaded. And that's fairly simple. We'll just search for OmniRig and DXAtlas.com is where you want to go. We want to go over here to Downloads on the right hand side and we're going to scroll down here to OmniRig and we're going to download OmniRig. Uh, so just click and download it. Once you get it downloaded, run it. Go through the install. Um, just take the defaults. When it's all done, everything's going to disappear. It's like nothing happened. It's like, okay, it's installed. Now what? Well, the reality of it is that it's installed, and you can go in under your menu to get to the setup for OmniRig, but it's just as easy to come over here to the Options button over here within uh, HDSDR and move down to the CAT to Radio OmniRig Control and go up to the top here and select OmniRig Setup. A little box pops up like this. You select your rig type. Mine is a FTDX3000. I'm on COM11. My baud rate is 38400. Data bits 8. Parity, none, and my stop bits are one. Now, um, understand that these settings, the COM port, the baud rate, the data bits, the parity, the stop bits, the RTS and DTR settings are all reliant on how you've configured your radio. Usually the default on most radios is 4800 baud with eight uh, data bits and two stop bits. Uh, and usually RTS is high. And you can see here it shows high handshake or low. However, you need to go in and look on your menu in your radio and make sure that you have it configured right. Once you have this set up, you just click OK and go back to options, back to the same place we were. And you notice that, OK, sync rig one is checked. I'm going to uncheck it and then I'm going to go back in and I'll check it. If there's a problem with it, when I check it, it's going to have an error. Looks to be good though. So we can test that. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to spin my dial and while I'm spinning my dial this should move here, right? So let's go ahead and spin the dial. Oh look at that. All right, we'll try to get his, uh, get this all tuned up by hand to 14265 and we're there perfect. You notice that it moved up here too. Now, um, let's make sure that I can tune the radio by clicking on the screen. So I'm going to turn the volume up here 
and I see that something's going on here. I'll click here, and my radio is now at 14225, and I'm on that. Let's uh, click back to 142500. My radio is now on 142500. Let me tune down on the radio to 20, uh, 225. Takes a while to tune, but I'm there and I'm here. Everything seems to be working fine. Um, let's see. So it says I'm on upper sideband. All right. Let's go ahead and I'm going to try to change to 40. Ooh, there we go. It changed to 40. Look at that. I'm on uh, 72.12. And uh, let's see. I'm on lower sideband. I'll go back to 20. So that all is working great. So, ta-da, I've got it working with my rig. Now, you didn't see all the work that went in to get all those settings right in the rig and have it match everything else, and you're not seeing all the work that it takes to try to interface it with different programs and make it work with everything, but um, I've given you a good start on that. Anyway, with that, let's talk a little bit about the problems that we have with connecting the SDR to an antenna. Now, do we want to connect it to the same antenna on our radio that our radio is on? Well, you know, if we have an IF output out of the back of our radio, or maybe an RF output out of the back of our radio that's designed to be grounded when you transmit, um, that might not be a bad idea. Uh, we could put it all on one antenna. If we don't, then we have a little bit of complication there. Because now it's kind of like, all right, well, you know, we want to listen on the radio and use the SDR kind of as a, just as a pan adapter, but we're going to have to switch the antenna back and forth because if we try to transmit and the SDR is hooked directly to our antenna, what do you think is going to happen? We're going to let the smoke out of that little SDR. Uh, the front end receiver on it is just going to come apart. Okay, uh, so we don't want to do that. And also on the other side of the coin, we may not necessarily want to switch over the antenna to that to use it as our primary receiver because it is digital. So there is a delay. And if we're really looking at jumping right on and, um, you know, on a search and pounce to get in in a pileup, that delay might be too much. So um, what are we going to do? Well, I've got a few solutions. First, let's talk, take a look at the right one. Did I say the right way? Well, actually, I think a better description would be the easy way. Although it is the safest way, too. Um, if you're fortunate enough to have a RX and or an IF output out of the back of your radio, or if you've done a mod to pull IF out of the back of the radio, then you're kind of done here. Uh, everything will be done for you. When you key the radio to transmit, you're going to have the antenna disconnected from the SDR. You're not really going to have to worry about that. Also, when you key it to transmit, you're not going to have to worry about it not being connected to an antenna because you're still sitting over on the SDR portion of the antenna switch. So if you have those outputs, it's the way to go. Now you can use either the IF or the RX output. Um, there are advantages to both. Let's talk about IF output to start with. The IF output comes directly from the back of the intermediate frequency. That intermediate frequency is probably any place between oh, 6.7 megahertz to someplace around 12 megahertz. Uh, my Yesu puts out 9 megahertz. Um, now, the only issue with that is that you don't have the entire antenna bandwidth. You're dealing with what the bandwidth is that's available coming out of the intermediate frequency. Now, it probably isn't going to matter if you're just looking at one band, but if you want to look at multiple bands, like go from 40 all the way down to 10 meters on your SDR, you're not going to be able to do that because there's not going to be enough bandwidth out of the IF to do that. 
The other disadvantage to the IF is that you're constantly on the center frequency. In other words, um, when you have the display up, when you are switching around, you're actually going to be tied to the center of the waterfall. So the entire frequencies shift, not just the pointer. And I don't like to operate that way. I actually come out of what's called the RX or RF port, and that is a direct link to the receiving antenna in the radio, and all the bands are there. I have a multiband dipole, and all the bands are there, so I can stretch out as far as I want to for monitoring. Also, I can set it up so when I click someplace out on the waterfall, the pointer moves there. The pointer doesn't stay in the center and shift the entire band. At the end of the day, it's completely up to you which output you have and how you want to do it if you're able to do it this way. Let's take a look at that configuration really quick in the software. All right. Well, let's configure this for IF output. I've got the radio hooked up. I've got the radio configured with OmniRig. It's Rig 1. Uh, I need to go in now and open up Options. And I need to go to Front End Configuration. Under here is where I can choose how the antenna and the frequencies are coming in. Um, if I'm using IF output, I want to select the IF output. SDR on IF output. And it's going to ask me, what is the IF output controlled by? In this particular case, it is OmniRig, and it's the first rig. Okay. Um, the other choices are irrelevant unless you're using HRD, which uh, is beyond the scope of this video. Um, and if you're using Rig 2, that's fine too. Just make sure it's configured and using Rig 2. All right. Now, I have several choices for sync mode. I'm going to select full sync in both directions. Now, the reason that I do that is I want any change that I make on the SDR to be emulated over on the radio and vice versa. And now it's going to ask me for those magic numbers, the IF frequency offsets. Okay, so the IF frequency on my Yesu is 9 uh, megahertz. If that's the case, why do I have this set to 9,009,000 hertz? Well, let me tell you, when I first set this up, I set it up with IF output, and I put 9 million in there, and I had a global offset over here of zero. And lo and behold, what happened was, when I would tune, there would always be a line of interference associated with the frequency that I tuned to. And I beat my head up against the wall, and I started searching the internet for it. And I'm sure if you've ended up here, you've probably searched the internet for videos and how-tos on this. Uh, I found one of them out there that talked about uh, using a global offset and then adjusting the IF frequency by that global offset which would move that interference line, whatever that global offset was. So I said, all right, I want to move it 9 kilohertz. So I set my IF frequency to 9,009,000 hertz, and my offset, the global offset, at 9,000 hertz. And guess what? That ugly, nasty line was 9,000 hertz away, and I was happy. Anyway... Once I got that, I realized that I had to adjust the lower sideband and the upper sideband offsets and things like that. This is fairly arbitrary. It's kind of like an offset from center. Um, just uh, go ahead and uh, take the defaults. I used uh, 1480 and minus 1480, but uh, play around with it. It's going to have to do with when you think it looks like it's lined up if it sounds right or if it sounds like they're on helium or uh, if you're tuned far in. And this just allows you to adjust that. Um, other than that, I can, of course, mirror RF spectrum. I can mirror RF spectrum to the tuner with uh, offs uh, greater than X amount of hertz. Um, offset CW to lower sideband, uh, swap CW and CWR. 
Uh, all that I leave unchecked. The bottom two choices, just for information, is if you're using a down-up converter. Um, you don't need to do that if you're running in raw mode. Okay, so I apply it. Click here. I'm on 14250 on the radio. I'm on 14250 here. Let me click here and see if it tunes to 14240. Well, you know what? It tuned, but what happened? The center frequency of where the center is on HD SDR is now the tuned frequency. Let me spin the dial. Oh, look what happens, okay? Yeah, we're tuning, but that center frequency is not changing. Now, I think I went into the reason for that, um, but um, this is just because you have X amount of bandwidth on either side of your intermediate frequency. So the setup is to have it locked down on the center so you have the widest possible spread. Okay? So, but that's it. That's basically how you set it up for intermediate frequency output. All right? Now, let's go ahead and set it up, or actually set it back, for the regular frequency. All right. We'll reopen the program. We'll go down here, back to options. We'll go back, and I want to click on SDR hardware um, connected to antenna. And this is for my RX or if I'm using an external switch. Um, and all the rest of this is irrelevant. None of this below matters. Click apply. And we're done. Now, magically, if I tune down here to 1420, ah, the bar stays the same because I'm no longer limited by the intermediate frequency. Now I can use my tuner to tune straight up here to 14,225. Or excuse me, 14,250. That's basically it. That's all you got to do. Anyway, all right. So let's go ahead and take a look at some options for RX output when you don't have an RX output directly hooked to your rig. Okay, well, let's say you don't have IF or RF output out of your radio. How are you going to be able to do this? Well, there are several solutions. Uh, I've got three different switching solutions. Um, two of them I scrapped, and one of them I use right now with my 857 and my Go Kit, so I can actually have a waterfall when I'm out there in the middle of nowhere. Run it on a laptop, reasonably low power demand, and it shows really well for uh, MCOM events. Anyway, with that, uh, let's take a look at an old familiar friend, a regular old antenna switch. These things have been around forever. They have reasonably good life expectancy, and uh, they work for a really long time, and you can take them apart and fix them. If uh, they begin to mess up, they're not that complicated inside. Typically, if the inside components are still good. You can just bend them or readjust them and you'll be fine. Um, that said, this is how we'd use it. As you can see in this diagram, we're switched over to where the uh, SDR dongle is actually attached to the antenna. Um, when we're listening and using the SDR as a pan adapter, uh, we would be in this position. Now, I see a problem immediately with this. What happens if I key the transceiver up? Um, well, the transceiver doesn't have an antenna on it. It's going to an open, and if I don't catch it right away, I could damage my radio. So I'm going to have to be really vigilant about that. In a lot of cases, this was the problem that people with separate receivers and transmitters ran into for years. Um, now, but let's go ahead and throw the switch, and you see what happens is all receive goes away from the dongle, and uh, everything goes back over to the transceiver. And the transceiver now has full control over the antenna. 
Uh, the SDR dongle is isolated, so it should not be damaged by anything you're doing on the transceiver. Now, um, another fault with this is that you're going to have to listen to the frequency exclusively on the computer. You're not going to be able to use the transceivers, filters, and everything else while you're listening in SDR dongle mode. You'll need to uh, switch it over to the transceiver mode to do that. It, that's not a huge obstacle. You know, you click on it to tune it, see if you're interested, and then throw the switch and then listen on the transceiver. Um, and uh, that's in my original experiments, that's what I did, and it worked fairly well. Although I did key the transceiver a couple times in the wrong position. So I gave up on that idea. Then I found this. This little gem right here is kind of interesting. You can either have it go from port 1 to port A and port 2 to port B. And then if you switch it, it takes it from port 1 to port B and port 2 to port A. A. So let's take a look at how that would work in our little configuration. So under this, what we have is we have a dummy load, the transceiver and the SDR dongle hooked to three of the ports, and the fourth port goes to the antenna. In SDR dongle mode, the SDR dongle has access to the antenna, and the transceiver now is pushed to a dummy load. So operates the same way as the simple switch. However, uh, if I do key the transceiver or if you key the transceiver when it's in SDR dongle mode, you're not going to blow up the radio. Uh, it's going to a dummy load. Now the downside is when we flip the switch, now the SDR dongle is going to a dummy load, which constitutes a bit of an antenna. So it actually is going to get a little RF on this. It, it shouldn't be enough to hurt it. I use this for a long time as well. Um, again, my biggest problem was I was getting the audio through the uh, computer and I really didn't want to do that. I was on a laptop and the volume wasn't real good. I didn't have good uh, clarity. Uh, so I really wanted a different solution. And I guess other people wanted the same thing because this came out. Now, this is a modification on the original automatic uh, switch when you wanted to switch a receiver and a transmitter automatically. And this works really, really well. What this actually does, though, is completely different. Uh, it does require a 12 volt power source. And you need to, if you desire, hook it to the pitch to talk um, section of your um, uh, radio so you can send a ground signal to signal it when you are transmitting. But that being said, it also has automatic uh, settings in here that if you do start transmitting and even if it doesn't see a push to talk signal, it will go ahead and reverse off to uh, isolate the SDR. Another cool thing is if it doesn't have 12 volts of power, it disconnects the SDR. So let's see it kind of in action here. Here we are in a normal situation where you're not transmitting. You notice that the transmitter switch is open going to the switch. Both the transceiver and the SDR dongle are hooked to the antenna for dual monitoring. So the SDR dongle uh, can do all the display of the pan adapter uh, and the transceiver can be used with its filters and everything else to get a higher resolution sound out of the frequency that's being monitored. In the event you transmit, here you go, the switch closes and the SDR dongle is not only isolated but grounded. So it's a pretty good setup. Now, which one do you think I went with? Yeah, yeah, the last one. It makes the most sense. It's the best for the radio. And it is actually, after you get it set up, the easiest one to set up and deploy. Uh, there's no worries every time you transmit of turning a switch or pushing a button other than the push-to-talk button. And that's what I like about it. Anyway, that pretty much is it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you got a lot out of it.
Thank you very much for listening. Well, that's the whole show. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope it helps you out and helps you put together that rig that you're looking for for the shack. Or possibly gave you some solutions to be able to take some cool stuff out in the field and really show the uh, citizens what we do in amateur radio. It was great to do the video, and I appreciate you watching it. This is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73. Have a great day and hope to hear you on the air.